Section 1 Introduction We're going to talk about transformers, which have been the backbone of many advancements in fields like language modeling and text-to-image generation. As more people have started using transformers, there's been a growing interest in understanding how they work, especially when it comes to embeddings. Embeddings in transformers are complex structures that encode a lot of linguistic details and patterns. In the past, researchers have mostly looked at embeddings for their language capabilities. However, there are other aspects to consider, such as anisotropy and intrinsic dimensionality, which can give us important insights into the nature and behavior of these embeddings. Anisotropy is basically a measure of how evenly a distribution is spread out in space. It allows us to study the orientation and concentration of embeddings. A higher degree of anisotropy means that vectors are more clustered or directed in specific orientations. On the other hand, the intrinsic dimension gives us a measure of the effective data dimensionality, showing us the essence of information that is captured by the embeddings. These two metrics can be very useful in understanding the inner workings of transformers. In our research, we found a significant difference in anisotropy dynamics between transformer encoders and decoders. By studying the training phases of various transformer models, we discovered consistent patterns of anisotropy growth that hadn't been recognized before. Furthermore, we found a unique dynamic in the averaged intrinsic dimension across layers in decoders. There's an initial growth during the early stages of training, followed by a decline towards the end. This suggests a two-phase learning strategy, where the model first tries to unfold information in higher dimensional spaces and then compresses it into more compact concepts, possibly leading to more refined representations. Our main findings are, we discovered a unique bell-shaped curve for the anisotropy profile in transformer decoders, which is different from the uniformly distributed anisotropy in encoders. We confirmed that anisotropy increases progressively in the decoders as the training proceeds. We identified a two-phase dynamic in the intrinsic dimension of decoder embeddings, an initial expansion into higher dimensional space, followed by a compression phase indicating a shift towards compact representations. For our research, we use the NWIC 8 dataset, which contains 100 million bytes of Wikipedia, making it a rich source of diverse textual content. The dataset is publicly available and has been cleaned and structured, with a vocabulary of 205 distinct characters. The vectors are grouped into batches, each with a minimum of 4096 elements. We apply a selected method to determine anisotropy or intrinsic dimension to this batch. Before assessing intrinsic dimension, embeddings are shuffled to mitigate potential correlations. Results from individual batches are then averaged to calculate the metric for that layer, also capturing the standard deviation. To compute anisotropy, we used singular value decomposition, SVD. We represented the centered matrix of embeddings as X, and its singular values as sigma. The anisotropy score of X is given by the square of the first singular value divided by the sum of the squares of all singular values. This can also be calculated using the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix. To determine the intrinsic dimension of a set of embeddings, we used a method that explores how the volume of an n-dimensional sphere scales with dimension d. For each data point within our embeddings, we determine the distances to its two closest neighboring points. This process generates a set of pairs. Using this set, the intrinsic dimension d can be estimated. We define a ratio for each point, and the cumulative distribution function, CDF, of these ratios is provided by a certain formula. From the CDF, we can deduce the intrinsic dimension. To estimate it, linear regression is applied on the plane, with the logarithm of the ratio and the empirical CDF for the ratios as the variables. Section Summary Embeddings and transformers encode linguistic nuances and patterns, and studying their anisotropy and intrinsic dimension can provide insights into their behavior. The investigation reveals contrasting anisotropy dynamics between transformer encoders and decoders, with decoders showing a bell-shaped curve and increasing anisotropy during training. Additionally, the intrinsic dimension of decoder embeddings initially expands into higher dimensional space and then compresses, suggesting a two-phase learning strategy that leads to more refined representations. Section 3.1 Isotropy of Hidden Representations In this section, we'll discuss three main topics, the isotropy of hidden representations, the intrinsic dimensionality of these representations, and the architecture of encoders and decoders. Firstly, let's talk about the isotropy of hidden representations. 
This refers to a problem where the learned embeddings in generative models, especially when they are tied together, start to degrade. This is known as the representation degeneration problem. We found that unlike fixed word embeddings, such as word 2 vec, the embeddings in a basic transformer model tend to cluster within a narrow cone. Recent studies have shown that this kind of anisotropy, or direction dependence, is common in all transformer-based architectures. However, within smaller, local subspaces, the embeddings are isotropic, or direction independent, which makes the model more expressive and improves its performance in downstream tasks. We've also found that despite various methods to calibrate anisotropy, there's no significant improvement in downstream tasks. This suggests that the local isotropy in the hidden space of transformers may be what makes the model so expressive. Interestingly, we've found that this isotropy is not just present in encoder-only or encoder-decoder architectures. We've conducted experiments on various architectures and found high cosine values across layers, especially in models like GPT-2, which is a decoder model. We've also looked into what might cause anisotropy, particularly its connection to rare words in the transformer's vocabulary. We've tried using character-level models to eliminate the influence of rare tokens, but these models didn't show significant improvements in our experiments. Next, let's discuss the intrinsic dimensionality of these representations. We've found that the training trajectory of the transformer architectures occurs in a low-dimensional subspace. This means that fine-tuning only uses a small portion of the model's parameters, and we can identify the main directions of these task-specific subspaces. Using this method, we've achieved performance similar to fine-tuning in the full parameter space. Lastly, let's talk about the architecture of encoders and decoders. The original transformer architecture consists of both encoder and decoder blocks, which can operate independently. Decoders are typically trained for language modeling tasks, focusing on generating coherent sequences of text, while encoders are aimed to produce contextual representations, or embeddings, from the input text. We've analyzed multiple encoder-based models, such as BERT, Roberta, and Albert, and decoder-based models, including OPT125M13B, LAMA27B13B, LAMA27BChat, GPT2, GPTJ, Falcon7B, and Falcon 7B Instruct, to compare their behavior. In our results, we found clear patterns in the behavior of encoders versus decoders and how their properties change during training. We've compared the anisotropy levels across various pre-trained transformers, analyzing both encoder and decoder models. Encoders have relatively consistent anisotropy levels, with minor variations based on the model size and training data. Decoders, on the other hand, have a unique bell-shaped structure, indicating that the middle layers tend to have a higher anisotropy concentration. We've also examined how anisotropy changes during training. We've found a consistent growth pattern, followed by stabilization, across various models, suggesting an inherent characteristic of the language modeling training dynamics of decoders. Finally, our exploration into the intrinsic dimensionality revealed interesting patterns. The initial stages of training exhibit a sharp rise, indicating the model's attempt to map the information to higher dimensional spaces. However, as training progresses, there is a notable decline, suggesting a subsequent phase where the model compresses this information, refining more compact concepts.